on YouTube. I'm Chuck Gentles and I want to welcome you to my channel. And what you're looking at here is my riffle tray for my dry washer. So what happens when you use your equipment is it kind of wears out as you can see here. I've got a slick plate and the rocks run down across this first piece of cloth with all one cloth and it's it's worn through in, in two spots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cloth off and uh, I'm going to try something new that I haven't done before but and this one's really shot you can tell here the holes and we were just blowing dirt up out of these holes and this is my dead airspace this is the riffle right here going across this way and this is just the fingers with the silicon right behind it so we have a dead airspace on every every riffle so anyhow, let me get after this and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so to remove this, we're going to try something a little different today. This is called Goo Gone. And uh, my wife used to be a painting contractor. And when we do a spill or, you know, get drips from a brush, we'd shoot it with this and it'd come right off. So it's supposed to be good for removing glues. So we're going to try it on here and see because these are pretty hard to get off, they, they come off in pieces usually, but uh, and this is silicon, it isn't a regular glue, it's just regular silicon, so it, it may be a little tough, we'll give her a shot. Well, I just sprayed this and uh, soaked it down, I see a couple spots I missed here, so let me... Okay, and we'll just let it sit for just a little bit, and then uh, this should make an attempt to soften this glue and uh, the good thing is it smells like oranges so alright we'll be back I'm going to show you this uh, well you can see where it's coming loose here already and it's just been a little while it, it comes right loose I'm trying to do this with one hand and a putty knife and hold the, hold the tray but you can see it comes right right off there. It just, it'll just work loose all the way now. And I already did this side here. It's loose all the way now. And I can probably, I'll try to break it loose on this side. And I can probably just peel it off. But I can't show you that because it'll be one, both hands. Yeah, I've got most of this off now, as you can see. I'm going to make another attempt. Uh, I started it with a putty knife, just getting it under the edge, down on that end. Now I'm clear up to here, but this is pretty much, if I can do it with one hand, it's just peeling off. It's like peeling a banana. And, uh, it's hard to do with the camera in one hand, but it, it is. You can just see it's, it's just coming right here. See how easy that comes off? Now, what I probably will do, because I don't want this on here when I put the new one on, I'll probably maybe wipe this down with, uh, uh, I don't know what, maybe some more of this goo gone or use some lacquer thinner, maybe lacquer thinner, I think it might be better to get the, all the, the residual wire wheel of it a little bit. Okay, that's it for now, we'll continue on later. Okay, you can see how well this came off, I'm using the uh, four and a half inch angle grinder, this DeWalt, a little wire wheel. Um, I would say be very very careful when you do that because that wire wheel will hook the, the piece and throw it on the floor and it'll hook and bounce back at you so just be careful if you use a wire wheel.
cloth I'm using isn't the really expensive stuff that's on the market. This is stuff that I've used for years. It's uh, cheesecloth. This is a right at a yard of, of cheesecloth. It's wrinkled, but it, you know we'll straighten that out when we uh, glue it down. But we've had that last piece on for about five years and a lot of dry washing, so this stuff holds up well. I don't know if you can see how well you can see through this or not, but maybe. Uh, yeah, you can see through it. So it lets the air come through. It doesn't let the dirt come through. So it's just enough. So mine measures out to be like 10 and a half by uh, 18 inches. So, so what we'll do now, we'll just cut along the lines and glue one side to the tray and then we'll wait for like 24 hours and stretch and do the rest of it. So cutting this cheesecloth is just a matter of following the line. Stretch it just a teeny bit. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You can trim all this you want. When you get it glued, just take a razor knife and trim it. So that's the, the short side. Just follow the line. And I got this cheesecloth at, uh, I think it was Joanne's Fabric. And I believe it cost me $3 for the yard at the time. And I've, I've made at least two, maybe three of these now. But that's all we need right there. Okay, so what I've done now, and I've taken a magic marker and marked lines across here, approximately where I want them. It's not really important because I will trim this when it's all done. And then I wiped it down with alcohol. And I'm going to use this silicon, I'm just going to use a clear, uh, this is from Silicon Depot uh, online and I, I've used this in several other projects that I've mentioned in my uh, videos. So I'm going to lay this down and I'll glue it on and show you what it looks like. So if you look real close here you can see the silicon bled through and that's what's going to hold this side. The interesting thing about this is I've stretched it now and uh, I'm using these little five pound weights or ten pound weights whatever they are to, uh, to hold this in place for now and then we'll finish gluing it tomorrow but I got it close to where my lines are and, and so everything's just where it needs to be and uh, this should glue up good and if it doesn't uh, stick where you can see uh, we've got a couple light spots. I'll just take some more silicon and push it through and it'll bleed right through this cheesecloth. Then tomorrow we pull the weights, we'll pull this cloth back, do the, all the riffles and uh, cross every riffle, you know, wherever there's a riffle here, like right here, we'll, we'll glue it here and we'll glue it down the sides on both here and then on this side and here and down, you know all the way down up on the top up on the bottom and then where this is real long here right here in places I'll just run a razor knife along the edge of this with a straight edge and cut that all off and look really nice and then we're ready to go dry washing again okay guys we're gonna Finish gluing this up. Pretty simple stuff here. You can do a little bead here, just real light. Like so. Smear it around a little bit. Well, this isn't like making mats where you actually got a little bit of time here. So then we're going to go up here, there's a black mark here and here, so I know this is where this needs to be up here, go right to the edge, like you, and then we're going to go 
here. I know it looks like I'm skipping, but I'm not. Because by the time you smooth this out, it is just a nice, even place all the way down. And then here, I do put a little bit more down here on the lower. I think it's a lot of activity with all the material going over. Here, I might be getting low on And you just want to have enough on here where you're going to come through on your cloth. I'm just about out of silicone. too much. There we go. So now we got all the sides there. Good to have rags around. So you're going to take this up. And what I want to try to do is hit that mark here. And right down there. Just like that. And we're going to push it in. bleeding through here just a little bit. And you're going to hit every riffle. You want to go against the side that's not down yet. Stretch this. There, stretch it. Here, and here should be the last riffle. Oops, 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 that's not good. I'll just hold that and redo it. Let's just soak it right into this cloth. See, I still have a good edge here, but look how much I stretched over on this side now almost full width. So we're not quite done yet. Uh, we can wait a couple hours. So we got the initial one done and I needed that extra time to make this stretch, make it stretch good. And uh, once this sets, then what we're going to do is come in on the upper side of these riffles and I'll put a finger width of silicone right across after the sets.
I know it doesn't look like it's tight, but it, it really is. I mean, it isn't going to get much tighter than that anywhere. As this dries, this will shrink up a little bit. This will actually lift this up and then we'll put more silicone here and then cut it. That way it'll, it can't come loose. There's just no way it can come loose. Work this side in just a little bit more. Because we do have strip down here also. And this this rack is a little bit different than some because my riffles and my whole riffle rack comes out. There's no little plate that goes over it with holes in it or anything like that that, that spreads the uh, spreads the air in it from the blower. Yeah, this is this is soaking through really really good. And you know, if you see a spot later on, just you know, hit it with some silicone, let it dry, and you're good. What I like to do is take a peek in here, though. Oh yeah, that looks good. I got a little wrinkle here. I got a bad wrinkle, but we might be able to even steam that out later. Let's see if I can pull this, maybe just. It's gonna have to do her. Okay guys, what I got here is a, uh, just a cough can with some parts in it. I'm going to magnet it down here on the other side right here. And we'll glue this, the rest of this up. In here. This has been about an hour and a half. Okay, yeah, that's probably going to be pretty close. Let's see, I just want a little bit more in a couple spots here. Right here. Just stretch it really tight. Dead airspace. Maybe you can see it. Okay. So the dead airspace wants to be. Let me show you. 
dead airspace wants to be behind here. So it's almost the width of the riffle back here. So the way we do that is put some on your finger and just do this. Because it is going to soak through. You don't need a ton here, you just want something that will keep the air from blowing up out of there. That one's done. That one's done. Now this will make you have a little bit more material to pan, but it will also prevent light gold from being blown out of your, from behind the riffle. This one up here especially, because this is the first one after the drop, on the slick blade. This bottom one isn't too too important, but you know you want them all to be right. So that's it. That's how you do it. You know, we have one thing left and that's to trim this. If you can see it. Trim this cloth right here. It's too long now that it's stretched. Then we'll be done. So that's it, guys. Uh, you ought to give this a try. It's really cheap, really easy, really quick. Uh, you can let this sit for about an hour and a half, two hours, and stretch it. Then put the other side down uh, another hour and a half, two hours, and it's done. Then go do something else. And you got a really good, well, well uh, fitted uh, cloth for your dry washer. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and come back again for the next one. Okay, here's the finished product. The uh, tray is in, the cloth is on, and everything looks just fine. It seals up good. Ready to go find some more gold here pretty quick. Well, I hope this was a help to some of us who dry wash. You know, it's... Uh, really expensive to buy the cloth uh, from the prospecting shops but you know you can do it this way and you know you're going to get probably five years out of it and uh, and it's and not really a problem it's it's pretty easy it just takes a couple days for things to set up and you're good to go so thanks for watching give it a thumbs up share subscribe and may the bottom of Japan be gold forever I might have said this before but I'm saying it again